Hello everyone, welcome to our next snippet. As always, we're going to be using a piece of Pink Frog Smooth Card, four inches by six inches. And this is snippet 63. So I like the technique so much that we've been doing in snippets 61 and 62, that we're going to continue with that just for a little longer. So I'm going to use mustard seed again, and I'm going to take my mustard seed then my spice marmalade, and like we did before, I'm going to apply the ink direct to the card, just randomly, as we've done before, just pressing the inks directly on the card, and just keeping them quite random the way we apply them. And you can go over and over if you wish. It's entirely up to you. So I can add the yellow and just go over, all over like this. And then you can add the orange if you wish, just all over. So it's entirely up to you how you want to add those. Just place our lids on. You can add a little bit more red if you wish. And it's a nice, simple way to get a background. So we're going to spritz that with water and then you'll place that on one side and let that dry. Obviously, if you're going to do just 15 minutes of the project, like we do with the snippets, then you can just dry that with your heat tool. If you just let it have a few seconds just so that the ink moves and reacts. I've then got one that I've created before, and this is just letting it dry naturally, which works rather nicely. I'm then going to take the snippet stencil, Tweet, but not the actual stencil. I'm actually going to use the cutout. So we'll use the cutout and I'm going to use a little bit of white paint. So let's just, you don't really need much white paint. So I'm going to take the white paint and I'm going to add that over the beard. Now, if you want to, you can hold this in place with a piece of low tack tape, just so that you're not holding in place. It's entirely up to you. Your stencil will clean nicely, so don't worry about that. Now, as you're dabbing, just sort of feather your paint out. Feather it out a little bit further than you're planning. So just bring it out a little bit further so that it's nice and feathered. And then, voila, you have a beautiful beard. Too much white paint, as I normally do. But you have a beautiful beard now, and it just looks lovely. And yes, you could draw around that with black if you wished, but I quite like it as, as it is. I quite like the softness. So then I'm going to take the text from Stamp 1066, any text you wish to use, and I'm going to use my VersaFine Claire Morning Mist. And I'm just going to add a little bit of stamping just here and there around the bird. And you can use first generation and second generation stamping if you wish. It's entirely up to you. So I'm just going to add a little bit more stamping just there just beautiful so then i'm going to take my anti-static bag so just the reason i'm using an anti-static bag is to make sure that the top half of my card hasn't got my fingers all over it because sometimes i handle the card and i've got my sticky fingers all over it now if you wanted to you could leave that just like that with nothing else added. It's still beautiful. So I'm going to take my Clematis stamp 
TE5. I'm going to use the Clematis stamp and I'm going to use Versamark ink just to add a touch of that Versamark. And then I'm just going to bring that floral just in to the card slightly. And you know, I never, I always forget to get the copy of paper. It's hilarious. I do it every single time. So just allow that just to rest on there. Then I'm going to take my white embossing powder. We'll use this that's actually got a design on there. I'm going to sprinkle with my white embossing powder. Just tip off the excess. Just need to remember to put that back. I'm going to put the lid on there because Tracy knows exactly what she's like and I will just knock it everywhere. So I'm just going to take my heat tool. I just love that beard. Just think it looks fab. I'm going to take the heat tool. Just heat it up a, a short while and then we'll melt that embossing powder. Just give that a few seconds just to melt once it gets going. There we go. Thought it wasn't going to get going then. It's like, oh, it's going to go slow. And once you've started melting one area, just move your card so that you move on to the next area. There we go. No, I've missed. You, cannot, you can see very easily where you've missed because it's very dull. There we go. Much better. Now, if you wanted to, you could leave your flower white as well if you wished. Again, that's entirely up to you. It's a snippet of an idea. I'm now using some of my Prismacolor. So I'm using Crimson Lake PC925. And I'm just going to add a little bit of colour just to that floral just to give it a little bit more definition. So this is my darkest colour. Just to give that a little bit more definition. I'll then use my second colour, which is Vermilion, Pale Vermilion PC921. Just add the Pale Vermilion. And there's not much of that area to colour, so it works quite nicely. And then I'm just going to use the Lemon Yellow PC915. It takes me longer to find the, the actual numbers on the card. just so then I'm going to come back in and just add a little bit more of that darker color and you can go straight over the embossing just to give it a little bit more of that depth and I don't press on too hard because you don't want to sort of break down the fibres of the card too quickly. And then I'm going to take a little bit of a grey ink pad. Now, obviously, you've used the um, 
where's mine you've used the distress oxide in the background so you just need to be aware of that because that will also react so what happens is you get a little bit of shading from the grey just a little bit from that grey but not too much because you've got that colour underneath so I'm just using a touch of that grey just to make that pop a little bit more and I would continue with that just adding a little bit more and what I'm going to do is take the text stamp again just a little bit of the grey and let's this is a permanent ink pad this is the morning mist so I'm just adding a little bit of the morning mist just with the text stamp I can wipe over the embossed area and remove the ink from the embossed area but it just makes it look a little bit more like a sort of vintage book style so then on the clematis i've got the timeless text and i've got my timeless wording here which i've stamped in nocturne ink so we'll just take that so i've got the timeless and then we'll just use our black um posca pen tracy can't get her words out so just use our plaque posca pen just to give us a faux black mat so i'll just kiss the edges of that with the posca pen just to give it a faux black mat and then we'll just wipe up our area going to add the timeless and of course I've left my adhesive so we'll just add the timeless like so let's just take and Tracy's adhesive always needs a good shake because it's coming to the end add the word timeless just here and what I would do is then spend the next couple of minutes that you've got left, just going around your floral, just to give a little bit more shading. Don't, don't add too much water. Now that text won't move because you're using a permanent ink pad. So just spend a little bit more time adding some shading. And then if you add your white splatters, that brings it to life and don't forget just add a little bit of shading just under your beard just so that it doesn't look like it's floating there we go and then if we take this and place this in our snippet album just so you can see. Snippet 63 looks beautiful against that black. So just spend a little bit more time adding a little bit more grey in there. And that is your Snippet 63 done. So I hope you've enjoyed that. Love to all and I'll see you all soon. Bye for now.